gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths, Subscriber Craft Review. And once again, before we get started, a little reminder to everyone, particularly those who are just joining us uh, in this series today, submissions for this series are closed. Please do not ask uh, me to review your craft, because the series will be ending once I'm done with the current list, and it will not be resurrected, because uh, it is honestly a bit too much to keep up with. You can tell by the rate I put out these videos that, like, it's very, very slow. But, uh, yeah, so we'll be replaced by something else, so don't worry about it. And, uh, in the meantime, we've got a few more to go, and today's craft is the Geotech Overwolf by Geodarian, uh, which has been sitting in the back of the queue for quite some time, like a lot of them, so bear in mind that uh, this was built for a version of the game that is quite reasonably old, not super old, but uh, uh, the game has changed a lot since it was first submitted to me. And yeah, so keeping that in mind, what is this thing? This is, well for one thing, this is being reviewed on its own, like uh, I always have a squiz down the list to see uh, if I can possibly review two craft at once, and in this case, this is a fairly unique one, just in terms of its design, its construction, its shape and just what it's up to, really. So, it's being reviewed on its own today, because it's a, it's a very, well, you might have noticed, those of you who uh, are a bit uh, familiar with From the Depths will look at this and think, hang on, this looks like a very Onyx Watch type of craft. Like, it's like it's very circular, it's quite thick, it's like quite wide. Like, it's uh, not exactly the same as Onyx Watch craft. Uh, there's a few noticeable differences. But in terms of the kind of bulbous uh, hull, and uh, the guns are being surrounded by guns. So yeah, it's got like these four like off-center non-spinal guns, and then uh, three ones down the middle, three turrets right down the middle. It's very Onyx Watch-like, and that's kind of cool. And I will just uh, show you this thing in Onyx Watch colors, because that's always, uh, that's always a hoot. Because once you do that, you'll see it's not ex an exact copy. I don't think Geodarian was uh, trying to make an exact Onyx Watch ship, because you can see, kind of see, it's mainly the turrets. The turrets aren't quite as uh, castle-like as Onyx Watch craft are, but the deck is painted like that. The hull is definitely shaped like that uh, to kind of get that Onyx Watch feel, so that's kind of cool. That is uh, interesting to note. So now let's uh, get into it uh, proper. So what's the deal with this thing? So. First off, this thing is pretty well armed, so uh, these cram cannons, you see there it's got one, two, uh, three, four cram cannons in three turrets, which are high explosive frag. You can look here, it's this 13-20mm, uh, and it is a lot of explosive and some fragmentation pellets. Uh, not a huge amount of frag damage, so you can see the stats and minimum reload time down there, and uh, this thing does fire at its max speed. It's about 60 fragments for 79 damage each, which is not a lot. Like, you really need high densities of uh, fragments in cram cannons in order to get them to do a lot. But it's a lot of explosive damage instead, which is always nice. And similar thing over here. Uh, considerably more frag damage, slightly less explosive, but yeah, still nice hefty punch at that. Also, it's very convenient, you can just look at the cram cannon, and it's in the UI and all that stuff. Uh, these two are the same. And it's also got a LAM system, quite a decent one, actually. So, it recharges quite quick, so this thing was built back in the days when LAMs were much stronger than they are now, and uh, when storage was less of a thing, so we can crack open this craft, hit shift to P four times, for those of you wondering. It's got a hefty LAM system here, and it's mostly pumps. So, uh, you'll notice there's a new, relatively new, tooltip on the LAM system saying, uh, pumps can fill cavities in only 13 for 4 seconds. Consider adding more storage or single input cavities. I really don't see how that is a disadvantage, because, uh... Admittedly, like... LAM systems tend to be more for dealing with cram cannons these days than anything else. Because APS shells move too fast and missiles have too much health, apart from small missiles. And fast charging isn't that bad a thing. It uses a lot of power. This is still has decent storage, and has frequency doubler, just so it gets that minimum 2 AP. Anyway, yeah, this is a decent lamp system. Like, 
it's like it's not fully up to date. Back in the day, uh, this lamp system would be like much much better than it is. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Not a crossbow. Okay, yeah, sure, a crossbow. Why not? So I don't think it'll take uh, the full crossbones volley. Nope, it didn't. Uh, let's try that again with uh, something that isn't that big. So let's just repair that. I was testing this thing against uh, some other craft, and uh, the lambs doesn't last uh, forever because uh, just it doesn't have enough storage, but it does a decent enough job. If you can kill the first volley of a cram ant craft, that's already pretty good. So it can handle the uh, it can handle the crams and missiles off a of plunderer quite nicely. Or not. Doesn't handle come on guys, really? Okay, let's let's try that again, but have uh, have the freaking uh, overwolf actually face the target properly, because it doesn't it's best it's lamps reports best from the sides. Rather than uh, rather than from the back, I can't think of a single craft in the game which has a uh, lamps that perform well from the back. That'd be just silly. Okay, turn off. Don't actually want you shooting yet. And boom, 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 boom. Okay, so it's decent. It's not amazing, but it's decent. Lamp system. Right. And repair again. So. Unique design, as I said, it also has a lot of shield, so if I spawn in... What should we spawn in? Let's spawn in a flying squirrel. So you'll notice there are shields all over this thing, and on the one hand, uh, that means it does slightly better against uh, APS spamming craft uh, than it otherwise would. On the other hand, uh, shields have been heavily, heavily nerfed, so this isn't as essential a feature as it once was. So uh, yeah, that is to note, it, it actually looks quite good. Usually I find when shields are, uh, you'll notice the spacing of them, they're quite, uh, it is a pain in the ass still to rig shields like that, so props to Geodarian for uh, bothering to do that, because goodness knows I usually, even back in the days when shields were good, I usually didn't bother to do this. But uh, yeah, so lots of shields, slightly, does slightly better against APS spam, slightly better, because shields are bad. And uh, what really is the feature of, of this thing, VV defense-wise, is the armor. This has quite thick armor, so he, right here at the front it has one, two, three layers of metal, multiple layers of metal on the front, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, well, six layers of metal and two layers of stone, and this is a... A pretty good armor design, actually, because it has, uh, for one thing, it's using a variety of materials. It's uh, lots of alloy on the outside, by the way. So an alloy is reasonably tough, but more importantly, it floats. And uh, lots of metal and lots of stone. So using a combination of metal and stone, in particular, is a good idea, because what you have here is stone is cheap and is good as just for cheap hit points. And... The whole design of this is that you've got conductive surfaces on the outside, you've got all the alloy and metal on the outside, uh, but the inner lining of stone means that the whole craft acts as a kind of Faraday cage. So against EMP surges, what you've what you've got is like, let's uh, just uh, have our EMP. Let's have a hefty EMP surge. Get that to 10,000. 10, so, if you do something like this, it did take out a shield and a surge protector, but, especially below, what happens is that, okay, it is destroying blocks. What the hell happened there? How did that happen? What you've got is. Uh, the MP surge just kind of runs around the outside of the craft rather than uh, being channeled inward. 
which is a very good thing because uh, generally speaking you want to keep EMP out of the innards of your craft because that's where your AI lives, that's where uh, the heavy armor enclosing your ammunition lives and all that kind of stuff. So that's a good thing. And yeah, stone in general just makes your, in general makes your craft more EMP proof. Uh, combined with that is a whole bunch of surge protectors in uh, places where the stone, where metal actually touches it. So having AI components touch metal is not generally a good idea, but um, the amount of surge protectors that used here makes up for that. So surge protectors aren't exactly, they're not amazingly cheap, like they're 20 per block, which is a lot for a single thing. If they're just slightly cheaper than heavy armor in fact, but they are worth it. They make uh, craft considerably more EMP resistant and uh, da -da 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 -da, damage reduction 90%, blah blah blah, all that stuff. They're very good at pulling EMP surges away from uh, components that would otherwise be destroyed by them. So lots of surge protectors here, there and everywhere, just in strategic places. Uh, I keep going back and forth of the whether it's a good idea to stick them right next to the things they're meant to be drawing EMP surges away from, but uh, like I've been told that they can still work. It's just honestly, surge protectors are the kind of thing. If I just happen to have a one block gap, I stick a surge protector in it because they're so handy. So yeah. Uh, also on the defense wise, it has anti torpedoes. And is this one of them? It is. So very basic one. And, uh, let's see here. Yep, there it is. It has, it's just a missile interceptor fuel tank and propeller. So, ideally you'd need a ballast tank on this thing as well. But this thing does uh, a job. Not a perfect job, but a decent job at uh, destroying enemy torpedoes. Not good against the uh, huge swarms, but it does the trick. And, yeah, I think, is that the only one? Nope. Yeah, I think that's the only one. No, wait, no it isn't. Here's another one. Duh, there it is. There's the passive sonar which you need. So yeah, this thing has torpedo proofing, which is uh, a very good thing, because otherwise torpedoes are a tremendous pain in the hull. So, still on the defense-wise, uh, the main gun, which is this big thing up here, which, by the way, is firing a lovely mixture of... gun, two of them, a high velocity, and uh, a hollow point high explosive frag round, and also with timed fuse I just noticed. Yeah, this is a pretty good all-rounder shell. Uh, hollow points aren't as good as they used to be, so because you need to really dedicate uh, the shell around kinetic damage, and particularly armor piercing in order to get them to work well. And, uh, in fact, these days, with shields being what they are, you don't really need an inertial fuse if you have a hollow point. In fact, inertial fuses you barely need at all these days. But, yeah, this is still a decent shell, and in particular, this gun is very, uh, survivable. So, you will, uh, notice, uh, well, let me show you in here. This thing is armored, so... Going here... Yeah, so you'll see that, uh, uh my cursor goes red when it's on the hull, and it's going green when it's uh, on uh, the sub object, so away from the hull. So this is an armored turret. Nice and armored. And which means that this uh, thing tends to survive reasonably well. So let's go here, save that, and bring it up. Not armored on the bottom, which isn't a complete disaster, by the way. And there you have an armored turret, which looks to be... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six... Yeah, that is a 7x7 seven seven neck, which is... a. Uh, perfectly fine, it protects all the right around. So combined with the fact that uh, this uh, turret is internal armor, and it's quite high up on the hull, and has this uh, quite thick armor surrounding it, so how thick is this? One, two, three, four. Yep, four layers of stuff, so three of them are metal, one of them is alloy. Uh, this main turret tends to survive the longest out of any of them, which is just a well, because I think this is the main turret of the craft, it's the biggest one, it can fire in all directions, and it's just, it is the main source of damage on this craft, really. Well, or one of them, really. This is the kind of advantage of just sticking guns all over, all over a craft. Redundant firepower. So, uh, what else, what else? So, I've mentioned the armor design, lots of air gaps, and all that stuff. I'm just reading through the notes right now. So, the APS, it has also a decent mix. I've mentioned already, it has this back here. It has these things, which is, a uh, 
It's like, this is almost a, I guess uh, the community would call this a meme shelf. This is a 500 millimeter uh, squash head gunpowder casing and that's it. This is not the most efficient squash head you can pack into a one meter long uh, shell, but it is, uh, it is, I don't know, it is kind of okay. It's not bad. Like, uh, mostly this is just great to spam it, so... It's a good spam shell if you're out of ideas and you just want to fling onto them quickly. It doesn't have the best rate of fire for that, but... Remember, these were made before the big APS update, so... Uh, that's, uh, that's not really a flaw in my book. Like, uh, no one could have planned for that. And the craft hasn't been updated uh, since then, at least the version I have. So the... The final APS gun up here is also a bit of a relic from the past, but it's still, it's okay, it's not bad. And that's a disruptor shell, so how big is this thing? Ah, camera jumping around all over the place. This is a 225mm shell. Let's go here, let's go here, there we go. Ah, oh, oh, perfect. So, not a huge amount of EMP strength, but, like, back in the day, this would have been great. It would have, uh... It would have fried shields perfectly well, especially considering the rate of fire is actually pretty... I think this is pretty good. Yeah, it's 48.1 uh, rounds per minute, which is decent. It's not amazing, but it's okay, and that would pop shields back in the day. These days, it's mostly for... I don't know. These days, less useful, but uh, that's easily fixed. All you've got to do is change the shell, and the gun is still effective. Also, pretty de... what the... Oh, this is the other squash head, right. So, yeah, this is actually... Ah, I didn't, I didn't realize that. That teach, teach me to be lazy. Okay, so, problem is, is that these two uh, guns in the turret have different shell velocities. But again, uh, that's the APS update for you. It had changed uh, how shell velocities work, and disruptors are now fast for some reason. But yeah, this is a... Uh, back in the day, this would have been a very good combination, disruptor and hash. These days, uh, the Disruptor doesn't do as much as the Hash shell. And I think Hash has been slightly nerfed as well. But yeah, it has uh, lots of guns, all this stuff, and you'll notice that this props underneath it, this thing is very stable. Because it has the PIDs, it has all the PIDs, here's the PIDs, the PIDs are here. So you can see this. So it's got the pitch, it's got the roll, it's got uh, the altitude. These are the settings for those of you who uh, want to see it for yourself. I personally still cannot decode PIDs very well at all, despite the fact I use them all the time. And on to back to the cram cannons. It's got decent Tetris. So at first, when I first looked at this, I was kind of confused because I looked at them and thought, "Hang on, what what is this? There is an air gap in here, uh, by the looks of it, which is less ideal. But this is uh, actually the same kind of diamond Tetris." Uh, that you uh, will see elsewhere. The only difference is, is that uh, here, it's just just at the top, it has uh, connectors and gauge increases uh, stuck in the corners. But you go down the middle, you've got uh, the central core surrounded by... you've got the central core of pellets surrounded by connectors on the four sides, and they all connect in and they crack pack. Uh, they cram well! And these ones on the side, similar story, these ones are a little bit weird. Oh, these have EMP on them. What? Oh, I didn't realize. Blow me down, they have EMP. I never actually noticed that. You can tell how hard I look at these things uh, uh, before I review them, can't you? But, uh, yeah, they're just full of surprises. Easy to miss things. But, so these are EMP frag. Uh, HE cannons, it turns out. So let's go here, yeah. Explosive, EMP, and frag. Huh, about a thousand EMP damage. Not bad. Not bad at all. But yeah, similar similar kind of Tetris. Core in the middle, and that kind of uh, diamond Tetris rating adding out from that, which is pretty decent. And gauge increases crammed here, there, and everywhere. And also, uh, for the most part, decent APS Tetris as well. So we go here. Here. Well, I say that. Is that a belt fed order loader? It, it, it is a belt fed order loader. Okay. Uh, take back what I said a little bit. 
not perfect. So, uh, with belt-fed autoloaders, uh, the thing, what you want to do is you want preferably just one autoloader, one clip, and as many intakes as you can manage. Because then uh, what you get is that you have something that fires fast and also reloads quickly. So, actually, he's done that, never mind. So, here's the intakes on the inside. More intakes on the inside, so these are okay. Uh, the ones on the side, less so. Like, it would be better to do something like this, so... This is just by way of example, by the way. Here, here... Aha! Now I see why you did that, Geo. Oh, no. Oh, uh, dear. So something like this, as opposed to, because all that uh, adding multiple clips onto a belt fed autoloader does is lengthen the reload time, really. And uh, lengthens the firing time too, but really lengthens the reload. So not so good. I'm meant to be talking about the good things about the craft. I keep doing that, sorry. Da -da 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 -da. So, decorative. It's got smoke. It's got smoke here, there and everywhere. It's just, once again, I'm getting better at decorating craft. I'm still very bad at it, so I always appreciate it when other people make the effort. A little bit of fire around there, and a little bit of uh, smoke on the back here. And I particularly like what uh, has been done with the, this uh, steam piping, because that looks like a proper, what do we call it, smokestack, like with the nine exhausts. And there's just one smoke decorator down here with, I believe, Particle that, 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 that size factor times three, so it's a lot bigger than it uh, would be otherwise. So yeah, it's an interesting, interesting design, unique looking, and pretty handy in a fight. Now we talk about the bad stuff. It also has rams on the front, which mostly seem to be decoration, I think. But okay, so now we get on to the uh, not so good stuff, which I guess we've already hinted at already. Okay, no, those, uh, those lambs are not underwater. Phew. So the first thing you might notice is that the outside of this craft is covered in alloy, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, you'll notice that there's like, this is it's good looking heavy armor and shield and stuff like that, but all the guns are quite high. This is quite a tall craft, by the way, so height of 24. I don't think that actually includes the uh, sub-object sub on top. Oh yeah, this thing is... Uh, Roughly in the cost of what I consider, I guess these days this is like average cost really because everything's so much more expensive. So about 321,206 uh, materials. Back in the day that would have been battleship uh, cost worthy. But uh, these days that's like, ugh, I don't know. I don't know, like n not quite battleship cost. But any is there a hole here? Oh yeah, steering props, right. Uh, you'll notice that there's alloy on the underside of this thing. That's not usually a good idea, and uh, in this case, I think it can be demonstrated uh, reasonably well. When this uh, craft uh, loses power or it loses the PIDs, it tends to capsize. You can see it's uh, kind of sinking right now. Yep, there it goes. It's uh... okay. It's not quite capsizing. You notice it's got a very jaunty lean on it, which normally is not a problem because it has the PID for that very reason. But let's see, can you float around? Do a hard turn. Actually, where's the center of mass on this thing? So the center of mass is not too high, but it is reasonably high up in the craft. And you'll notice, yeah, no, it's not doing. You tend to find with uh, craft that rely on alloy to stay afloat is that once they get damaged, so let's actually damage it. Uh, zero. So do uh, this, for instance. Also, this thing partially relies on air pumps, so if we do this, and we just blow up one side of it.
It's got a very jaunty lean on it now. Yep, there it goes. It's got a very jaunty lean on it. Now keep in mind this is if the PID uh, either gets destroyed or if it loses engine power. And one more. So that's an issue with uh, putting buoyant stuff underneath, because now it's got all this buoyancy underneath it, and once it loses it on one side, yeah, over it goes. Like that. Admittedly, not a lot of craft could survive the kind of holes I just put in this thing. So, yeah, there is that. This is a weird video. In the pro section, I keep uh, talking about, like, like not-so-good stuff, and in the con section, I keep talking about, like, eh, it's not that bad. And, uh... I guess a general note is that this uh, craft has aged surprisingly well, but uh, like with the disruptors, the disruptor shells, the APS rate of fire, and uh, the, la the LAM systems, and the torpedoes, uh, it has taken an update. It does uh, probably need some tender loving care, like to get it up to like present day standards of craft, because the updates have taken their toll of it. And, uh, yeah, that's worth considering. It also has the problem of, because of how it's arranged, it has trouble concentrating 100% of its firepower on one target. So let's actually spawn it in again. Uh, without uh, the PID removal and stuff. So, from the side, uh, it has one, two, three, four, five weapons strained on the target. Which is great. And same on that side. From the front, it is... Uh, one, two, three, four, five again, and from the back, it has three. The problem is, is that it has well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weapons in total, and it's not as extreme as, say, well, let's uh, compare it to a real Onyx Watchcraft, so you can see what I mean. It's not as bad as things like the Bulwark, uh, in which most of their firepower actually cannot focus on one spot, but yeah, this is a craft that can't concentrate all its firepower on any one spot. So yeah, this is a similar thing over here. It's got lots of guns on the sides, which means that uh, if enemies are over here, like on this side of the craft, uh, these two guns over here cannot uh, be used. They're just kind of dead weight. And from the front, uh, those two 500mm guns in the back can't really do anything either, if the target's at sea level. And uh, from the back, uh, most of the guns cannot fire. Which, admittedly, most broadside craft can't really fire at stuff from the back. But yeah, like, even in this thing's favorable broadside, so we should probably go down into the AI and talk about that very thing. Where is the AI? I knew where the AI was, once upon a time. Oh yeah, the uh, ammos and heavy armor compartments, which is a very good idea. So here is this, and... Auto-generated naval behavior, by the way, so, again, it's an old thing. Uh, reasonably, I guess medium's uh, broad range. It's uh, hovering in that 800 to 700 uh, meters away from the target, 90 degree angle, which means that uh, stuff tends to sit here. And, which means that uh, at any one time, you can never have all guns firing on target, which is an issue, because it means it has inflated cost. These two, and always, uh, there's two guns which cannot fire on the target, which is one of the downside of building craft like this. So, yeah, and... Oh yeah, so, I've mentioned before that the hull is extremely strong. It's multiple layers of alloy, metal, and stone, lots of surge protectors. Uh, the turrets, less so. So, you go here, there's, uh... Ooh, athlete panels. So there's one... Uh, applique panel, there's applique panel and metal, and that's it. And one layer of metal on the sides here for this cram turret. And over here, similar levels of protection. Uh, applique metal, which isn't bad armor if you don't uh, anticipate getting hit that often. And so over here, let's see. Yep, just one layer of metal. And over here, I'm guessing, yep, one layer of metal. And on this big boy up here, this is... Yeah, this is considerably more armored. This uh, gun is meant to survive, and it does so quite well. Layers of heavy armor, and uh, and lots of metal up here. Also, apparently... What the... Why is there a... Am I crazy? Am I a crazy... But what? Is 
that a mimic? How is that a mimic? Like... Oh, there it is! There must be a mimic somewhere around here, the... Doing that, because, like, I don't see... I don't see a wood... There's no metal block there. That's cunning, that's very subtle. I'm glad I noticed that. Because otherwise you get this uh, weird thing where you can kind of see the receiver below the radar. Any case, so this is the most survivable turret, and by the looks of it, all the other ones are expendable. So uh, let's uh, dig out the explosion again. Which is zero. And let us have a 10,000 explosion. So if, say, a cram shell lands here, doesn't quite cripple it. And it lands here. Uh, that shears off a barrel, lands here, that cripples it, lands here, cripples it, lands here, cripples it, lands here, cripples it, lands here, does not cripple it. So, important thing there, is that uh, this suffers from a flaw that a lot of armored craft uh, suffer from, which mine as well. The Star Slung, by the way, suffers from this, is that the hull is extremely tough, the turrets less so. Actually, you gods, a lot of my craft suffered from this. The Scylla back in the day, the Naga, a whole lot of them. Those of us who like to build armored ships, uh, this is often a problem, is that the hull survives longer than the gulls... Gulls? I see you see gulls! The hull survives longer than the guns do, which is uh, not what you want. You want... Uh, the firepower to last as long as possible so you can keep shooting uh, at the enemy and destroying them. And if the hull significantly uh, outlasts all the weaponry in a fight, it's probably a sign you have too much armor for the armament firepower of the ship. So if you go here, the armor cost is only 44.2% uh, of this craft, which is not a lot. It's less than half, but still, the... These guns all here, apart from this main one up here, get destroyed reasonably easily. Because, simply because uh, the way they're stacked and the way that uh, the, this whole deck is laid out, they tend to eat a lot of fire. So let me show you what I mean. Let's see if the crossbones uh, does it, because it might not. The... Let's, see, let's spawn in the trebuchet, because the trebuchet is a devil for this. It, uh, even now, it likes to... No, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. Didn't want to do that. So here we go. Here is the trebushka. Which is a very bad way of saying trebuchet. Let's spawn this thing over here. The trebuchet, by the way, I know, happen to know for a fact that Geodarian hates this thing. And frankly, I don't blame him. Uh, because the trebuchet is a giant pain in the butt. So let's spawn you in on... Let's spawn you in Twin Guard colors. Because that's fun. So here we have it, spawning the way it probably would. Maneuvering towards the target. And there goes that first gun. Nope, there goes that cram. Goodness me, I can't see anything. So admittedly, the trebuchet is good at spitting out Dukkha. But particularly on the approach, uh, these front guns tend to eat it quite badly. Simply because of the way the ship is laid out. Like, they're not well armored. And, like, these guns didn't even get a chance to fire. This is an extreme example. And you can see this one is actually surviving quite well because it's got that heavy armor mantlet thing up there. And on the approach... It just keeps getting hammered by the admittedly uh, still ch rather cheesy trebuchet. So, the hull survives longer than the guns do, and that is unfortunate. This is still a game where uh, glass cannons have a slight edge over uh, turtles. So yeah, keep that in mind. And also you might... Uh, ah, getting back to the ally hull. Uh, just like having a look at the statistics of this thing. So, we've got a lot of alloy slopes, so health 520, armor 13, weight 10. Compare that to a metal slope, health 700, armor 15. Now you think there wouldn't be, and I've said this before, you think there wouldn't be that much difference between an armor of 13 and 15, 
in practice, I tend to find that metal is a lot better ugh, excuse me, at dealing with explosions than alloy is, simply because, it, particularly once you start stacking them. So you have uh, two layers of alloy, is 26 armor, uh, two layers of metal is 30, and that extra four armor actually makes a bit of a difference. Uh, let's uh, test that again, so... Do, 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 explosion... That's the wrong button. And let's have a fight out this one. So, here's metal. And, well, this metal slope up here, watch the numbers. Just under 5,000. Let's go here. Wait for the numbers to vanish. Less so. What the hell? Huh, okay. Ooh, there's more stacking here. Durr. Well, never mind. I can't show that easily then. Uh... Take my word for it, alloy is not as good as metal at dealing with explosions, which is a problem, because uh, the waterline is often an place which, uh, a place which explosions happen. So, da -da 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 -da. Oh yeah, so, I mentioned before that uh, all the turrets except the main one are a little bit fragile. Uh, part of the reason for that is that they are not armored on the inside. They're all kind of more expendable. Well, this one has a kind of armored neck, but below decks, uh, not armored at all. Same with this cram cannon over here, not internally armored. Same with these ones on the side. No internal armor, it's just uh, relying on uh, the uh, armor surrounding it, the hull armor. And same thing over here with these 500mm guns right here. They are uh, Actually, they only have alloy surrounding them, so these things tend to pop off reasonably quickly. So, you might, uh, some of you might be wondering why that's important. Well, armoring your sub-objects, particularly your turrets, is essentially a free air gap for one thing, so it means that if a heat shell, shape charge, comes here, it goes pew, and penetrates through, what is it? One, two, three, four, five layers of uh, material, which it can easily do, by the way. Heat is crazy like that. Uh, this uh, turret immediately gets popped, because it's uh, loaded with explosive rounds. And same with the other smaller turrets surrounding this craft. If this thing was internally armored, which admittedly would be a bit hard in this case, uh, because this is a 3x3 turret, if you want to keep it 3x3, armoring it is pretty much impossible, unless you're using a direct input gun, which is uh, not advisable these days. So, that uh, that's an issue if you want to build small. Uh, to comp compare that with this gun, where it's uh, quite resistant against heat and hash simply because you've got this thick armor here, and you've got this free air gap, which doesn't take up any space, and you've got this layer of metal here, so it takes considerably more uh, heat or hash shells uh, to pop this big gun up here, because a lot of work was put into armoring it, actually. So that's an issue. Uh, I mentioned the shields. There's also the thing where uh, the gun's accuracy, so uh, that is set, that set, that is set, and that is set to absolute minimum so these guns are firing on target. Uh, these rear guns don't have that, and that is an easy mistake to make, it is easy to overlook, and so yeah, that's, a, that's just a kind of whoopsie uh, up at 2am playing from the depths, and you just forget to do that, so... Yeah, that is a that it can be crippling though because these are 500 millimeter shells. They cost a lot of ammo to fire, and you don't want them to miss ever. And do, do, do mentioned the funky Tetris already. Like this Tetris over here isn't great. This Tetris over here is a little better, I believe. Yeah, it is. It's got a good rotational symmetry on this one. It's kind of wrapping around here and. Uh, Wrapping around the other side as well, so that's better. Dang it. And where are we? And that's, that's it, actually. So, overall, uh, the Overwolf is definite improvement. So, that's the main thing to take away, is that some of you may remember way, way back in the day, uh, Geodarian had another craft reviewed by me. Uh, you lucky fish, Geo. You've had two crafts reviewed by yours truly. I'm not sure if that's lucky or not. Anyway, so the underdog, which is... I should actually spore it in uh, for contrast. I'm 
trying to remember if it's the Geotech underdog or just the underdog. It's just the underdog. Under, 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 oh, the, the underdog. There we go. So you can see here, well, just by looking, you can see the difference between the two. It just uh, the Overwolf is overall just a better optimized, tougher, more formidable craft, and the Underdog is, uh, well, for its day, still pretty good, still all right. But like the Overwolf is a definite improvement, and considering how long this thing has been sitting uh, in my folder gathering dust, I'm willing to bet good money that Geodarian has improved in other ways as well. So, on that note. Uh, Thank you, Geodarian, for submitting this craft and being patient with me while I get around to reviewing it. And thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon if you like, it really helps. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell!